So we know that we use wire nuts to connect small wires together, but what do we do when we have really large wires? All right, so for really large wires, we have to use something called a Polaris tap. So uh, when we're dealing with larger conductors, we have to have something that we can just put one conductor in, put another conductor in, squeeze them together, and it needs to be able to fit the number of wires that we're trying to deal with. So a lot of times out at services, we'll have a large parallel feed come in. So we'll run like two blacks, two reds, two whites. So once we get into the service to get all of those conductors together, we have something to tie them all in together. So we use these blocks. Now there's a whole bunch of different ones. They're all called Polaris taps because the company is called Polaris. Um, so most of us just call them Polaris taps. You might hear people call them like IPLs or IPLDs or something like that. And that just means like the design of how the wires come in or come out essentially. We'll get into that in a second. All right, let's start out with this guy. Um, this is essentially a way for you to get a long Polaris tap that might be long and skinny into a much more shorter, squattier version. So on this, you've got six terminals where you can put you know, three in one side, three in the other. On this one, you have six terminals. Sometimes we run into a situation where we've got a shallow gutter and you need to put six wires together, but you can't fit this into the terminal, so what do you do? Well, they came out with this option. So it makes it so that it is half the size, but it still has six places to put wires. Now you might look at this and be like, well, there's nine holes in it, right? Well, you're meant to put three in the top and then three in the bottom. The, uh, the reason that they do this is they, they allow you to do what's called a pass-through. Um, you don't have to use these for pass-through, but every once in a while, we will want to take a conductor and we'll like score it in the middle and we'll just strip that insulation out. And you can stick this whole thing through the Polaris tap and then bite down on it rather than having to like cut it or having two ends to work with. The one thing that you need to be careful though when you're doing pass-through conductors, a lot of people tend to like overstrip and so they've got copper showing on like the outsides of, of the uh, terminal. If you have any copper showing on the outsides, you have a potential to arc between the metal and the copper wire. So be really careful if you're ever doing that, like try to undercut whatever you're taking off in insulation. But essentially the reason that these have come out is because they're taking really long skinny things that you can't fit into a gutter and giving you the same amount of ter terminals in something that's a little bit squattier that can fit inside of most gutters. So this is just one style, right? This is this is huge. So the conductors, you're talking about 500 MCM to 4 AWG. That's what this is listed for. So just because you're buying 500 doesn't mean you have to have 500, right? There's You could use larger ones, but Polaris taps are not as cheap as wire nuts are. So as you will see when you go to buy them, they're pretty costly. So the, the methodology behind it is to make sure that you get the right ones for the right size, for the right application. Um, otherwise you're gonna be spending a whole bunch of money for no reason. So now there are different configurations. So, you know, this is the, the same exact thing, looks identical. It's just less conductors. So you might only have three conductors that you're working with that are you know, dead ending and three that are passing through. Or you might only have one that's passing through, but you have like five other ones that you need to put on there. You get like a whole bunch of blacks going into multiple different disconnects for like an apartment building or for like a, uh, an office you know, that's got like five different suites. So each one of them is feeding off the same set of service entrance conductors. That's a possibility. So essentially all of these are the same thing. It's just that it shows that there's different configurations for numbers of conductors. So we would have three incoming conductors. This one we have five incoming conductors. This one we have six. A lot of times when you hear electricians talk about Polaris taps, we say barrel. So this is a three barrel. This is a five barrel. This is a six barrel but um, that's for one application of these. So this would probably typically go up into a gutter above a service or something like that, but these are all dry location. Actually, everything on here up till here is all only allowed to be used in dry locations, not damp or wet locations. So if you're doing a direct burial application where you've got like a, a direct burial junction box in the ground, well, all that earth is damp and wet and it rains constantly. So you shouldn't be using any of, the, any of these in a location where there's moisture or dampness. 
Moving on from that though, the next one is, you'll see these from time to time, and this is where you have the ability to bolt them to something. So right, like we stick a bunch of conductors in here, this thing's just floating like this. There's no way to secure this to anything, and we don't always need that, most of the time we don't need it, but it does come in handy when you're dealing with a lot of different conductors coming in from different directions, if we have a means to actually bolt it to something. So with both of these styles, this is the IPLM. So if we wanted to like get these neatly stacked next to each other, or we wanted to like make like a, a pretty kind of display of it, so once you open up a box, these things don't just come flying at you, but also it's a, a way for you to be able to do cleaner work. So it's got a really great purpose, but essentially, you know, you have four conductors that come in, four conductors that go out, and you've got two holes that you can mount and take a screw and just screw this to whatever enclosure you want to. So the mountable style is really cool. Um, I like them because it can kind of get messy, especially when you have like smaller ones with big wire. The wire doesn't want to just sit back where you tell it to. It's always going to like try to like fold out. So you got to end up putting zip ties in and putting straps in and trying to just get everything secured back. So I love these mountable ones because it, I can make a gutter look phenomenal with stuff that can actually be secured to the enclosure. All right, so in this test environment, obviously there's no ground. Nothing's phased. You got wires hanging out here. This isn't a job site. I'm just setting this up for like testing laboratory purposes. And you're not going to have a cut off wire on the inside, but bear with me. So the reason that I really like these mount on or mountable Polaris taps is because they're stuck on. They're like out of the way. I could have run some conductors up top for this one. I could mount another one next to it, run them conductors in the middle on that one, run another one in the back and put lower conductors and it just keeps everything nice and clean. That's why I really like these mountable, but not, I mean, most supply houses are gonna have your standard D, IPLD version of this, where you've got a couple spaces for conductors to come in, a couple for them to go out. The reason again, that I don't like using them as much is because you just have all this free stuff in there. And once you start getting like five barrel, six barrel Polaris taps, and you're talking like, I don't know, 600 copper or something like that, you're talking about wires you can't really man maneuver or manipulate that much. But one thing I always try to do is just make sure that my conductors are always in there straight. There's other things that you can do inside here using zip ties and strapping other things, little pieces of metal and things in the back of this, little bracketing things that you can come up with to try to keep everything neat. Otherwise, it just becomes this crazy jumbled mess and nobody wants to deal with it. All right, the next series that we're gonna talk about are this whole kind of T style. Um, a lot of people will call these IPLDs, but they're not necessarily IPLDs. Like uh, you have to look at the part numbers for all of these. So while this, um, this one that has four termination points on it actually says IPLD on the back of it, um, whereas the one with the same exact size that's only two says it's IT. Uh, so this is an IT250, this is an IPLD250-4 because there's be four of them. <laughs> so the reason that this uh, sort of T style is so widely used is it's really versatile. So not only do you have this whole like kind of L shape where you've got two things coming in from one side that you could use this as because it's got the caps on the back, but you can remove the caps and change it around so you can have one conductor coming in from one way and one going out the other way. So it also kind of uh, works to be like a butt splice sort of a thing where you can go end to end with things. Um, so they're really, really versatile and you know, they make them in every size you can imagine. You can get like uh, eight, I don't even know what the largest size is, but I've seen, you know, like huge blocks um, where you put multiple connectors in them. So uh, you're gonna probably find this style more often in like Lowe's, Home Depot, your local supply houses, it seems just because of the versatility that more of our supply houses tend to hold this whole T style more often. So you'll probably end up using them more. And then stuff like this, that's kind of special use, uh, a lot of times you're gonna have to order them. So Polaris actually makes a see-through option. One thing to note about these clear connectors is the benefit is you can actually see the conductor seated inside of there. You can see if you know if you cut it too short, um, it just allows you to make sure that you've got a fully seated termination. There's a little window on the back side and on the front side you can kind of see into it. So um, sometimes there's an issue with people like not stripping it out enough. And then when they go to, um, well, this one's stripped away too much, but if they were like, if it were like that short, right? And they went to put it in there, sometimes the terminal can 
actually tighten down on the insulation. It doesn't actually make contact with conductor. So you won't have power to something. You're, you're wondering why. So with the clear, the actual benefit is that you can see through it. That's why I like using the clears when they're available. One thing to note is you'll notice that there's two different styles of terminating. If we look in this one, we've got threads down in there. So the threads are meant to crush down and like squeeze on the wire really firmly. But with this version specifically, you'll notice that there's a, there's a little bit of an insert, this kind of like weird flanged little insert that goes on the inside in there. One on each side. This is specifically for finely stranded conductors. So once you get like really finely stranded conductors, a lot of those conductors won't uh, get pinched down in a termination. It won't be as good of a termination with something that is threaded. So they use something like this. So it kind of evenly crushes down on the entire thing. Um, and you just get a tighter connection with that. Now you'll notice that some of these have a gray cap, some have black caps. Black is for standard wiring. Uh, the gray is more specifically for copper and finely stranded flexible copper conductors. You might see some other brands that might have different caps on them as well, usually denotes like uh, for motor circuit conductors and things like that. But specifically with Polaris, the gray just means stick with copper and more specifically it's for finely stranded copper. And most of the time it's gonna be for DC or motor applications. All right, then the next style that we've got is it kind of sort of like a butt splice, right? You put two conductors end to end rather than two conductors side by side. Sometimes you have a cut, you need to make a splice and fix a broken wire. Other times you're running stuff in conduit and you're just trying to join the wires together at one end or you're trying to tap and spider out into my, you know, multiple other places. Now, just so you're aware, this is still a dry location rated connector. So this is not something that if you find a wire in the ground and it's cut, you go get one of these and stick this on there and just bury it in the ground. It has to be something that's submersible rated or direct burial you know, damp, wet location rated. So you could use something like this. It says direct bury and submersible sealed wire connector system for use in wet or damp locations. So you can see these things have these little plugs in there and you cut the ends of these off depending on the size of the conductor that you're feeding in. And then you feed the conductor through the end of this and insert this cap. So it makes sure that it's still sealed. And then it's got some heavy dielectric grease that you apply to the conductor insulation when you slide it in there as well. Now, submersible does not mean that it is fully submersible for long-term periods of time. Um, the listing that they have is for temporary submersion. So it's really more talking about water getting into an enclosure and then draining out and drying later. These aren't for something that you would use like to stick down in a well or something like that so that you could keep a termination down there. It seals it, but it's not meant for long-term submersion. So if you're doing stuff in damp or wet locations or direct burial applications, they have all of these same styles, right? The, the L style, we can still do the end to end, you know, fixing a splice if we have to, just like this guy. We still have two that come in from one direction, three, you know, they're completely configurable. But uh, it's just one important thing to note. I've seen a lot of people use just these things all day, every day, no matter where, inside, outside. But you gotta understand there's very different applications. And essentially it's just a bar of metal and they form different plastic around that bar of metal. This is what's on the inside of these things. So essentially it's just a ground bus, right? Like it, there's some terminals, there's threads, there's a little bit of antioxidant in there just to try to help the effects of oxidization on conductors because that happens. Now, some tips for working with these things. Obviously, when you start working with something like this, you're working with a lot of really large conductors as well. These large conductors, they could be copper or they could be a lot lighter, they could be aluminum. Um, not, not much lighter when you're talking about this many conductors. This thing is heavy as it is. This is several pounds, you know, like this feels like I could, it's like a, I don't know, like a, two to three pound weight maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. It's heavy, this is like super heavy. So when you're dealing with something like this, it's important to make sure as you're cutting your conductors that you lay this in there and you cut the conductors to the application and make sure you bend them and get them all so that this thing will sit 
actually in this enclosure where you want it. If you're out here and you're trying to put conductors in and you're just like randomly like leaving this thing flop and you try to go to get put it back in there by the time you have all those large conductors and you're going to try to like smash this into the box then you've got other ones that are you know like say we had another six barrel one and we're trying to like smash all of them in there you can see that all these big conductors that don't want to bend by nature once you add them all together into one block this whole thing is not going to want to bend so it's really really important to get this thing placed where you want it and make sure that every conductor that you run to it that you measure it very precisely and get it all bent up make sure that it bends so that it naturally wants to lay in the back of the enclosure rather than just pulling something out and smacking it in and then it starts to want to pull forward because you didn't take the time to plan it out. One other thing to mention when you're working with really large wires is always trying to keep the wires as straight as possible. So like doing little corrections while you're working on them just makes them straight. If you like leave wires in there like this, and they're big wires especially, it's so hard to try to manipulate and move all of that stuff. So this is aluminum, it's a lot easier to work with and the, the wire is smaller, it's 250 aluminum. So it's pretty easy to manipulate. But one thing that I always try to do is just make sure when you're doing your work that you try to keep it as clean and neat and straight as possible. Make sure that you don't have all of this stuff pushing out so that when you go to put your cover back on, your cover actually goes on and it's not keeping everything inside. That's a poor, poor move. Don't do that. Because that's another thing. Trying to get a lot of these covers, there's like eight foot gutter covers. It's like a one foot piece of steel that it is eight feet long and you got all these screws and you might be on a service call by yourself and you're sitting there holding on to this thing, trying to like undo each one of these screws. And then when you, <laughs> you get the last screw out, the last thing you want is that thing just to go boom in your face because there's all the spring loaded pressure behind it from somebody that just didn't care. And they just like stuff it all in there, put the cover on. That's just hack work. So don't do stuff like that. Make it easier on everybody. Make it easier on yourself. Plan your stuff out and try to do a really good job of making sure it all sticks in the back. And worst case scenario, best case scenario really, use mountables. Mountables are rad because you can actually secure them and make sure nothing goes anywhere. Anybody that has to work on it in the future, they can choose to take it out if they want to and put it back or they can have it mounted right in the back and they can pull conductors out, put new ones in. It's like so slick to have the mountable options. So now one thing that's not talked about a lot is the torque requirements for something like that. It's actually recommended that you torque these things. Um, the, the biggest problems with Polaris taps tend to be that they're either over torqued or they're under torqued. Moisture gets in them. Um, people put too many conductors. They might put multiple conductors in a hole and they're not listed for that. Or that they put finely stranded copper in and it wasn't listed to be used with finely stranded conductors. Anyways, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions down below, if there's anything that y'all use specifically or have seen, haven't seen, blown away by like this craziness. Um, there's actually a lot of other models too. They sent me so many different models um, and this is nowhere near everything that they have. So uh, love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.